And we are live. Hello, good evening, everybody. It is Calvina Banner here with Creating Awareness for Christ. Today is Wednesday, November 30th, and it is 5.16 p.m. Central Standard Time. So again, we are recording live on Periscope today. Actually, I don't think I said that yet. We are recording live on Periscope today. So that notification is for those who may be watching this through our my replay and YouTube and stuff like that. So Periscope is the venue tonight that we are using. So grateful to God for the many different ways we can use technology in a positive way, in a positive light, using social media to promote the word of God. So again, for those who are just joining me right now, Calvina Banner here, Creating Awareness for Christ. It is Monday, November 30th at 5.16 p.m. Central Standard Time, live broadcast through Periscope. So again, thanks, thanks in advance for joining me. So if you're interested in sharing this message as it is going forth right now, you feel free to do just that. You can do that by Swiping left to right if you are an iPhone user, just swipe left to right. It will um, notify your followers on Twitter that this message is going forth live right now. And also for those who are Android users, you can swipe up and down in order to do the same thing. Alert your followers that it's going down right now, live on Periscope, creating awareness for Christ. Please do that. Also, Feel free to communicate through your hearts, releasing your hearts by tapping the screen. Also, you are free to comment on the message as well. I love their interaction. I love the feedback because, as I always say, we are all in this together, all in this walk with God together. So encouragement, encouragement, encouragement is always a good thing. Amen. Even while I'm on this side of the camera sharing the word, sharing the message. Amen. All right, so it is about 5.18 now. I'm going to go ahead and get into the message. So if you happen to catch the title of the message, it stated in a question form, God is good all the time. Hmm. And I purposely posed the question. I pu purposely put it in as a question because it was brought to my attention in my spirit during one of my um, mornings in prayer with the Lord that, um, you know, I, I was praying and I was really travailing unto the Lord. And I was talking about, you know, problems and issues and troubles that I was having. This is what I was praying to the Lord about. And in that prayer time, he nudged my spirit and said, hold on, hold on, <laughs> focus on my goodness. Amen. Focus on my goodness. Hmm. And so that stopped me right there in my tracks because what it made me realize is this, that a lot of times in the midst of our troubles and our situations, we allow those troubles to eclipse, to supersede the goodness of God. Because the bottom line here, y'all, to answer the question God is good all the time? The short answer is yes. He is good all the time. But unfortunately, as I was saying, we sometimes allow our troubles and our problems to, to eclipse that, to kind of cover the goodness of God. But he does not change no matter what. He is always good and he is always good all the time. Amen. So that is the purpose of this message tonight. The purpose of this message tonight is to encourage all of us that no matter what, no matter what, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're looking at, no matter what we're feeling, God is good. God is good. And I don't want us to be so discouraged by our circumstances. Amen. I don't want us to be discouraged by our circumstances so much that we forget how good God is right now. You know, we hear that saying a lot all the time. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Right. So much so that it may even become cliche to us. Right. It's just in one ear, out the other. It really doesn't have much meaning behind it in that. However, I want us to take hold of that, that saying that God is good and mean it. And he is good all the time. So as I was preparing for this message, I'm like, good. What does it mean? God is good. G-O-O-D. God is 
good. All right. So when I was seeking him for an answer and, and, and what it means when I, when he told me to focus on his goodness for me personally, he is a caring God. He is a loving God. And he always, always has our best interests at heart. Amen. That's, that's kind of a, a, a um, you know, a, a definition of God's goodness. He, he always has our best interests interest at heart. And we have got to hold on to that and to believe that he always has our best interest at heart. Amen. There's never any underlying ulterior motives when it comes to God. God is a straight shooter and he loves us. It's his love. Amen. That um, compels his goodness for us. Amen. So our circumstances don't change the goodness of God. It doesn't change how good he is to us, how good he is in our lives. He always have our best interest at heart. So even considering some of the things that we go through, considering the, you know, the troubles, the trials, the tribulations, the losses that we suffer, the things that we go without, um, so on and so forth, even considering all that, Amen. God is still good. He still has our best interest at heart. Why? Because even Romans 8, 28 tells us that all things work together. Amen. And uh, I want us to take note that scripture doesn't say all good things work together for the good. It says all things. Amen. So we got to pull from the good things, the things that we perceive as good. We got to pull from the bad things, the things that we perceive as bad, and they come together <laughs> for our good. Why? Because God is good. Amen. When we give our lives over to God, when we accept the Lord um, Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, amen, goodness and mercy shall follow us <laughs> all the days of our lives. That's what the word tells us. Amen. So we can believe and we can stand on the fact that everything, everything that we go through, God is working it out for our good because he is good. Amen. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that encouragement. So let's think about this. How does God show that he is good? How does he um, show his goodness toward us? Amen. The first thing that came to mind for me is his compassion. <laughs> his compassion for us. And there's a scripture that I tied in with compassion where it says um, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where Jesus tells us to come, come to me, all who are labor and heavy, all who labor and who are heavy laden, and he will give us rest. Amen. Man, doesn't it just feel good sometimes when somebody understands where you're coming from and has compassion for you and, and can take a burden off of you and can take and can help you get, um, alleviate some of your load? That is what God is here to do for us. That's what the scripture is talking about. Amen. That shows his compassion. He cares when we feel that we are overworked. He cares when um, we feel that we are overwhelmed. He wants us to come to him. And give and cast our burdens and our cares on him. I'm, I'm, I'm putting together a couple verses now, but he wants us to cast our cares on him. And he wants us to take um, our burdens and leave them at his feet. Amen. That shows his compassion. He, he empathizes with the position that we're in. Amen. So with his compassion, I thank God that he also gives us direction. Amen. So sometimes even in the midst of our compassion, y'all, there are some things that God may tell us to do or not do. Amen. That also will tie into his goodness. And we have to be obedient to the things that he is telling us to do or not to do because he does understand where we're coming from. Amen. He does understand our position because he's experienced all things. Praise God. However, there's some parts that we have to take, um, that we have to do as well. And that all works into his compassion, his understanding for us. He'll give us solutions. He'll give us directions if we seek him. Amen. Another way, another way God shows his goodness, his goodness toward us is, is his loyalty. Oh, I am so grateful for his loyalty. I'm so grateful that God never changes. Um, and I'm grateful for the scripture in Hebrews chapter 13, verse five, where he tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Man, God is loyal. That is a prime way that he shows his goodness toward us. Now, I, you know, sometimes I catch myself praying 
you know, uh, before I leave in the morning with my kids and stuff, I'll say, oh, Lord, I pray, God, that, you know, be with us, God, be with us everywhere we go, you know, cover us, oh, Lord. Scripture already tells us that he ain't leaving and he ain't forsaking us. It is us that do that. You know, we do the leaving. <laughs> so we don't even really have to pray that prayer. We know that so long as we stay connected to him, he will never leave us or nor forsake us. That's just how loyal he is to us. And that's a way that he shows his goodness toward us. Isn't that comforting to know that God will never leave us nor forsake us? So I don't care what it is. I don't care what it looks like, what we're feeling, what we're going through. God is always with us. He will never leave us, abandon us to, um, to uh, you know, straighten out and figure out things on our own. That's just not his forte. Amen. He will never leave us or forsake us. That's a way that he shows he's good through his loyalty. Amen. Another thing, another thing kind of ties on. I was kind of talking about a little bit when I was talking about his compassion. His meticulous, and I like to put in that word, meticulous care, because he cares about us meticulously, y'all. And let me read a passage of scripture that will really show how and why he cares for us meticulously. Amen. So we're going to turn to Psalm. Psalm chapter 121, Psalm chapter 121, and we are going to read verses 3 through 8 right here. Now, this is some beautiful stuff right here. I love this. I love this. All right. So. This is what the scripture says in Psalm chapter 122, verses three through eight. It says this, and we're talking about his meticulous care for you and me, which exhibits his goodness toward us, his goodness for us. Amen. <clears throat> his goodness innately. He's just good. Amen. All right. So here we go. Verse three says this. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Verse five, the Lord watches over you. Mm. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Glory to God. Verse eight, the Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever more. <laughs> now tell me that is not meticulous care that exhibits God's goodness for us. My goodness. So let's break this down here just a tad. He will not let our foot slip. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. So basically at all times, God has his eyes on you and me as children of God. He has his eyes on you and he has his eyes on me at all times. Scripture says right here, he doesn't sleep nor slumber. He is always alert. Praise God. And he watches over us. He watches. He watches us. For those of us who have children or maybe even nieces and nephews that maybe we've babysat, you know, when they were babies. Do you remember the time when they were when they were babies and you and they were asleep and, and you just watched them? You just watched them, you know, what was going through your mind when you were watching your own babies or your own nieces or nephews or whatever the case may be when they were babies sleep or even when they're children now, they don't have to be babies. But, you know, when they're sleeping, you're just watching them. What are you thinking as a parent? Or as an aunt or an uncle, what are the, the things that run through your mind are like, oh, man, they're so sweet. I love them. You know, you just you just have these thoughts of adoration towards the children. Likewise, God has that same adoration toward us. Amen. While we're walking here on earth, God is always forever watching us, forever caring about us. Amen. And just looking at us like, that's my baby. Those are my babies now. That, those are my babies. Oh, they're so sweet. I love them. You know, they, just those natural thoughts of love and adoration towards us. Same thing. Same thing. So he's watching over us. Amen. And I love where it says here in verse seven, he will watch over your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your life. Amen. Not, not this month. He's not watching over just this day for you or me. He's not just watching over this moment. He's watching over our lives. Oh my goodness. Alpha and Omega. He is just that. So he is watching over. He is the beginning and the end. So he is watching over the beginning and the end of us, our lives. Amen. That is meticulous care. Again, that exhibits God's goodness for us. Oh my God. I get excited just talking about it more. Amen. He is watching over our lives. Praise God. And the, the, the 
the caboose verse, verse eight says the Lord will watch over your coming going both now and forevermore. Again, back to the whole life thing, both now and forevermore. So we don't ever have to worry that that's ever going to change. He is watching over us both now and forevermore. Tell me God ain't good. Tell me God ain't good. And, and, and I got to add this. See, now this is one of the great attributes of God. And I believe the more we study his attributes, like his goodness, his love, um, you know, just who he is in essence, who he, he is, our love and our adoration for him will grow. Amen. It, because we, we, it would just be undescribable, unfathomable, like all the things that he is and how he keeps us. Little old, old, little old me is what I say. I'm like, man, that little old me, God, you want, man. I, I feel some type of way, like, my goodness, I'm, I'm grateful. But out of out of him showing his love, his goodness for us, the overflow from him to me just flows back to where I just want to know more about him and love on him more and do the things that he wants me to do. Live under him, live unto his will, not my will, but his will be done. Amen. So I urge all of us in the midst of it, as we're talking about God being good, again, one of his attributes, study him. Seek him diligently. And we'll talk about that a little bit more too um, in a moment. So again, Psalm 121 verses three through eight talks about his care, his meticulous care. Again, an example of how good he is to us. All right, let's talk about his mercy. <laughs> Showing how good he is through his mercy. My goodness, and what is mercy? Mercy is withholding what we deserve. What we truly deserve, God withholds it from us. Amen. So Lamentations 3 and 22 talks about this, where he says, where the scripture tells us it's because his mercies that we are not consumed. Amen. Because uh, let's think about it. You know, we, we, we do have done a lot of sinning, a lot of things that go against the will of God, a lot of things that directly disobey him. And we even are aware of it. Praise God. But he's so merciful due to his goodness. He's so merciful. He don't just go and be smiting and smoking folks you know what I'm saying he could you know what I mean but he doesn't because he's so good and his mercy endures forever praise God I love it because uh, Chronicles first Chronicles 16 and 13 uh, 16 and 34 says that oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever his mercy oh forever really thank you God that your mercy endures forever because I know for a fact me and I'm speaking for myself y'all might be a, a, a cut from a different cloth but I know I need his mercy <laughs> I know I need his mercy every day every moment and again his mercy just shows his goodness for us, <laughs> excuse me, in the natural, you know, there may be some times some, some, somebody may have done something to you or even your children or something like that. They've done something wrong and you overlook it, so to speak. Um, you know, you don't punish your children for what they've done. That's showing mercy and that's being good to them. And they do see that as that. And likewise, we see that. Um, we kind of liken that to God, too, when he withholds the things that we deserve, the punishment, the discipline, the chastisement. Huh? Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. And again, an example of how he shows his goodness towards us, his goodness towards us. Amen. I'm so grateful for it. Amen. And so the last point, too, I want to make about his his goodness. And there's so many more examples beyond what I've listed here, but I don't want to be here all night <laughs> because the list is extensive. So many examples of how he's shown goodness and how he shows he is good. All right, but the last one I'm going to point out for this session is this, his ever presence, his ever presence. And it kind of goes along with leaving nor forsaking, but um, this, this has a little different angle, a little different twist. So here we go. Psalm 139 verses 7 through 10. Psalm 139 verses 7 through 10. It says this, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Hmm. <laughs> My God, my God, where can I go from your spirit? That is that is powerful. There is nowhere that you are that God is not. Let's make that perfectly clear. And that that shows his true goodness. You know how people 
when you're dealing with man, people, friends, foes, whatever, family members, whatever, let you hit a, a hard spot in your life sometimes. Sometimes people will leave you. Amen. <laughs> they will just go the other way while you're going through a struggle. Not God. Not God. That shows his goodness. Not God. Amen. He doesn't change and he doesn't leave. There's nowhere. Where can I flee from his presence? Nowhere. Amen. So we can always take comfort in knowing that God is so good that his presence is always around. Even when I'm not acknowledging it, even when I'm not aware of his presence, it is always there. No matter where I go. Amen. And not only that, not only is he there, verse 10 talks about his hand guiding us and his hand holding us fast, meaning keeping us steady, keeping us focused, keeping us on the path. Amen. Keeping us secure. Praise the Lord. So, huh, I tell you what, God is good. He keeps us. He's with us. He directs us. He leads us. He guides us. It's all because of his goodness and he cares about us, y'all. So again, I just want to drive this point home. Please, please, please know that God is good no matter what we're going through. And let me add this. If you feel, you know, these points that I just, you know, brought out, you know, his compassion, his loyalty, his mercy, his care, his ever presence. If you're feeling like, I don't feel his compassion. I don't feel his loyalty. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he care about me none. If you're feeling that, <laughs> if you're there, amen. I'm going to challenge you on this point. There may be a seeking problem. S-E-E-K-I-N-G. Seeking problem. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us this. It talks about seeking God. It talks about seeking God. It says this. And without faith, it is possible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly some versions say diligently seek him. <laughs> so, yeah, you may not be feeling his compassion, his love, his care, his concern and this and that. If you're not in relationship with him. Hmm. Yeah, you may not be feeling that. However, when you are in relationship with him and not only just in relationship with him, when you are earnestly and diligently seeking after him, kind of going back to the whole thing about um, learning about who God is, his attribute, attributes, who he is, his, the essence of God. When we are seeking him, amen, he will reward us. He will, re re he will reward us with us being able to see his compassion and feel his loyalty and experience his meticulous care. We'll begin to walk that out. Amen. So I urge you and I encourage all of you who may be feeling a little gap in betwixt you and God. And there's, I'm not feeling there's no more. I don't feel his presence. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel that God has left me. If you're coming from that position, I urge you, my brother, my sister, please, please, please seek God's face. Negate seeking what he can do for you. Don't go to God with your hand out. <laughs> go to him with your hands up. Hallelujah. Don't go to him with your hand out looking for um, something. Amen. But go with your hands up. In full surrender unto him. Praise God. Then. And then only will you be able to really experience. And, and live out God's goodness. God's goodness. Because I tell you what. Man. You know. And I, and I say this a lot. You know. In my messages that. You know. I've, I've, I've been through trials. Go through trials. Currently. Currently in trials and tribulations and whatnot. And like I said at the start of this message. God had to remind me. <laughs> Do not let your troubles supersede, eclipse me. And that's what I felt was beginning to happen. I began to focus on the problems and less on the goodness of God. Because as I've already stated a thousand times, probably within this last 20 minutes, <laughs> God is good. God is good all the time. No matter where we are, we have got to seek him for his goodness. We have got to understand that he is inherently good. 
Amen. And that will not change. Yes, our situations, our circumstances, the things we may go through, people, all of it may not be so good, but God is. God is. So we need to hold on to him. Amen. We need to hold on to him. Hallelujah. All right. So again, I just pray that this message was, was and is an encouragement to you. Focusing on God and who he is, particularly his goodness, especially during the tough times. Amen. God, you are good. Your mercy endures forever. Quote that scripture, 1 Chronicles 16, 34. Thank you, Jesus. God, you are good. No matter what I'm going through, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. Praise God. So we have got to speak life into a situation. The thing that we focus on becomes bigger in life. I know y'all have heard that be, be said before. The thing we focus on. So if we focus on our troubles, our hardships, our heartaches. Guess what? They are going to become bigger in our lives. They continue to grow and fester. Amen. But if we focus on the goodness of God. If we focus on God, guess what becomes bigger? God becomes bigger in our lives. His goodness. We begin to see things different. We begin to see the good things out of a situation. Amen. I know I constantly pray now, God, help me to see these situations the way you see them. Amen. And my God, oh, he answers prayers. Amen. He really does answer that type of prayer. When we are earnestly seeking him, diligently seeking him, sincerely seeking him, you'll start seeing things and reacting things to things a whole lot different. When we focus on the goodness of God, his goodness, who he is. Amen. All right. God bless you. I, I, I thank you. I thank you for riding out with me and, and listening to the message. Again, share this message. I always encourage all of us to share the message. Share the message. Share the message that it may bless someone else as well. All right. So the next time you'll see me on Periscope will be in a month from now. December 31st ish New Year's Eve. Yay. We are on the cusp of a new year, y'all. Can y'all believe it? Time is flying. Time waits for no one. Praise God. So oh, it's all the more important that we continue to, to live for God and to get our rights with God, get our lives right with God, surrender to God, um, accept the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior. If we have not done that already, we have got to get it together because time is going. Time is going. Amen. So I'll see you on Periscope again, December 31st. Um, I'll send out an announcement and um, yeah, I hope to see you there. Otherwise, catch me on my YouTube channel. You can catch up on all the videos that I post through Facebook Live, through Periscope. Catch up. Amen. Also visit me on my website at creating awareness, the number four Christ.org, www.creatingawareness.org for the number four christ.org see me there amen if you have any comments questions concerns i have a contact page there please reach out to me if you have any questions about your walk with god or, or anything let me know and i'll be more than willing to address it um personally or in a message or whatever the case may be amen it's all about us helping each other walk up the king's highway so again god bless you have a good night and on periscope i'll see y'all in about a month's time take care